Hello and welcome back. What's up? It is Total Eclipse here with a brand new video for you guys. Um, just to really update my guide on advanced building and satisfactory. Anyway guys, with that said and done, if you do find this video helpful, please do hit that like button. It's just going to help other people find this video who are trying to do these massive builds as well. And also, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. So without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Tip number one, um, I can't really stress this enough, it's from the old video, but use foundations. They are so important for keeping everything in place and all neat and tidy. Tip number two is to plan everything in advance. So as you can see, we have our foundries which go onto the constructors and then meet up at the manufacturers. Everything works because it was all planned in advance. Now, tip number three, Three, ideally you want to keep all your items in uh, separate storage units. So for example, we have the iron and the coal that are going to be in these. We have the steel going off to another location. You don't want to mix the items. This isn't essential anymore because we do have the splitters, the, the programmable splitters and the smart splitters, but it does save you a lot of space and make everything easier if you do keep them compartmentalized. Tip number four, you want to automate everything. For the first few tiers, it's not entirely necessary. You can do it all manually, but the sooner you get started, the better, because late game, you're going to be needing to produce huge amounts of materials. Also, the, the three things that I'd recommend starting automating on is concrete, so that's just a miner and a constructor. Also, iron rods and iron plates, both requiring just the iron ore miner a smelter followed by a constructor. Really simple, but they're going to be what you need in order to really develop your build. So, tip number five, research coal as soon as possible to allow you to automate power production so that you can focus simply on the building and the technolo technological advances. You don't need to worry about biomass and hand feed your, your generators, that's not necessary with coal and all the technologies after that. So for the moment I'm using fuel but soon with the updates we'll have nuclear power. Tip number six, so you can either manufacture all your items at separate uh, factories and then get them all pulled together at the hub for you to use for the next tier or you could actually get all of your resources, your primary natural resources pulled together to your hub where you create everything. Now there are pros and cons to each approach. If you manufacture everything elsewhere, you're only transporting the minimum amount of goods and thus you're less likely to suffer from bottlenecking, at least in the early game. But at the same time, if you have everything brought to your hub uh, in order to, to create the items, you have much more control over the, the situation and you're not having to waste as much time going to each of the the factories to make sure everything's working efficiently or to upgrade them. So tip number seven, you want to stack your conveyors where possible. It's going to make everything a lot more organized and neater and also easier to set up. It's just copy and pasting essentially. Now another thing, when you've got these massive conveyor belts um, running everything, you're going to want to feed all of your assemblers, your manufacturers together from one side and then have everything on the same lane so that all the finished products go down the same uh, aisle. This just allows for easy collection or if you're putting everything into a, a, a train station like this here or a storage area, everything's already in the same area. You don't need to have a spaghetti loop of conveyor belts converging from different angles unless you like that thing, in which case you can do it. Now tip number nine, I'll just show you very quickly. Um, conveyors can clip through walls, so if you're doing a build like this, you can actually, if you don't have enough room, you see how this kind of goes out, I doubt we'll be able to get our wall in there. No, you see, we can't get the wall, that's so frustrating for me. But what you can do, because conveyors clip, if you place down the walls first, you can actually quite easily connect up your conveyors. So everything's neat and nice looking. Not bad. So for tip number nine, you can stack your conveyors. Now I mentioned that you should do this earlier on, 
but I forgot that I needed to tell you because a lot of people online seem to think that you can't stack splitters for whatever... Oh, I'm doing it wrong. I need to do it from the top. Can't stack splitters when in actual, actual fact, providing that you've already built the, the framework, you can. The issue comes when you're trying to connect something up and it's saying you're encroaching on another um, uh, someone else's clearance. Well, the way to get around that is actually to start with the very top rung. So, for example, here, of course, we can't do it because it's the wrong angle. But you see, we need to place our conveyors first. So the top conveyor, let's say that's done. Now we'll do the next layer. And we'll put this one, say, on top of here. Let's just... Oh, there. Again, once we've done that one, we can then do the next one. We'll stick that there. You see how it's now working? And again with this one, and we'll put this over here. So that is how you stack splitters. So, tip number 11. You can actually create ladders using a stackable pole, conveyor pole. And all you need to do is find the place, and you can clip through the item. Works for just about everything, and then just stack on top of everything. So when it comes to building super compact factories like these, what's really important is to build the, the largest structures on the same floor. So for example here we have the miner which is the largest one, and then we also have the smelters which are the second largest items. So they're all on the bottom floor, and then the smaller ones, we've obviously fitted in the uh, two constructors here just because it, it, make, it uses up less space. But then we have the assembler which takes up less room than the smelters on the top floor along with the storage unit. So for tip number 13, you're going to want to be using convey conveyors to transport all of your raw materials or manufactured materials rather than using vehicles. Generally speaking, it's going to be a lot more efficient, which is the reason why. That being said, when trains are released in the next update, fingers crossed, I'm sure they will be much more efficient than uh, using conveyor belts in most situations. Tip number 14. I highly recommend planning for new releases. For example, trains are soon to arrive and they take up about one square foundation um, per rail of track. So what I've done in order to future-proof, I've actually planned to have two foundations worth of space available for them. And I highly recommend you doing this yourselves. Tip number 15. We have three different types of tier level power uh, poles. Now these are all great. When you're in your factory, you're going to want to be using the highest tier possible. So this is the Mark III that allows you to connect to nine different um, machines in total. There's also the Mark II, which is to up to seven. And then we have the Mark I, which only allows you to connect to four, which I don't recommend unless you're using something to connect from one factory to one in a totally different area where you won't need them as much. Tip number 16, you're going to want to explore as many wrecks as possible for hard drives. Now, this will give you access to new technology advances with alternative recipes for various items, which can boost your production tenfold. Tip number 17, if you're struggling to clear a space for, of the rocks and the trees that are there, people first mentioned using a chainsaw. Well, actually the best way for clearing out the rocks and debatably the funniest way for clearing out trees is to use Nobelisk explosives. I highly recommend it and it will mean that everything's clean and clear ready for you to construct on. Tip number 18. Now, late game you'll notice that you're only really limited by the production of raw materials. Therefore, I recommend prioritizing using your power shards for the production of raw resources. Tip number 19, the expanding upwards or even downwards if you have the ability. So I found a place that is underneath the map, which is where I'm going to be concentrating on developing my next base. But if you go upwards rather than outwards, you'll find that it's easier to expand as you're not having to play against the difficulties of terrain.
Tip number 20. Now, use conveyor lifts where possible. They're often more spatially efficient than long branching conveyors, which span over several layers, which actually allows you to fit more into your factories. So there we have it. Um, I've tried to keep this video to a minimum, but we have covered a lot of advanced points. Now, if you guys did find this video helpful, please do drop a click on that thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more guides or keep up to date with gameplay and news, then do make sure you hit that subscribe button. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and all the support. If you do have any comments, any tips for other people that I haven't covered, make sure you pop them below uh, for other people to see. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.